the clean of hands and pure of heart, shall climb the mountain of the Lord and stand in his holy place. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. The Lord be with you. Amen. Brethren, today we celebrate the memorial of St. Aloysius Gonzaga. He is a patron <clears throat> for all Christian youth. He is also invoked against plagues and pandemics. We pray in this Mass that through his intercession, all the young people may come to know the Lord, and that through his intercession, those suffering from different kinds of plagues may be healed and be relieved. In the silence of our heart, let us acknowledge our sins and so prepare ourselves to celebrate the sacred mysteries. You are sent to heal the contrite of heart. Lord, have mercy. You came to call sinners. Christ, have mercy. You are seated at the right hand of the Father to intercede for us. Lord, have mercy. May Almighty God have mercy on us, forgive us our sins, and bring us to life everlasting. Let us pray. O God, giver of heavenly gift, who in St. Aloysius Gonzaga joined penitence to a wonderful innocence of life, grant through his merit and intercession that though we have failed to follow him in innocence, we may imitate him in penitence. Through our Lord Jesus Christ, your Son, who lives and reigns with you in the unity of the Holy Spirit, God, forever and ever. A reading from the second letter of St. Paul to the Corinthians. Do not forget. Thin sowing mean thin reaping. The more you sow, the more you reap. Each one should give what he has decided in his own mind, not grudgingly or because he is made to. For God loves a cheerful giver. And there is no limit to the blessing which God can send you. He will make sure that you will always have all you need for yourselves in every possible circumstances and still have something to spare for all sorts of good works. As the scripture says, he was free in almsgiving and gave to the poor. His goodness, his good deeds will never be forgotten. The one who provides seed for the sower and the bread for the food will provide you with all the seed you want and make the harvest of your good deeds a larger one and made richer in every way. You will be able to do all the generous things which through us are the cause of thanksgiving to God. The word of the Lord. God. Happy the man who fears the Lord. Happy the man who fears the Lord. Happy the man who fears the Lord, who takes delight in his commands. His sons will be powerful on earth. The children of the upright are blessed. Riches and wealth are in his house. His justice stands firm forever. He is a light in the darkness for the upright. He is generous, merciful, and just. Open-handed, he gives to the poor. His justice stands firm forever. His head will be raised in glory. Happy the man who fears the Lord. Ah. 
message of Christ in all its richness find a home with you. Through him give thanks to God the Father. The Lord be with you. A reading from the Holy Gospel according to Matthew. Jesus said to his disciples, Be careful not to parade your good deeds before men to attract their notice. By doing this, you will lose all reward from your Father in heaven. So when you give alms, do not have it trumpeted before you. That is what the hypocrites do in the synagogues and in the streets to win men's admiration. I tell you solemnly, they have had their reward. But when you give alms, your left hand must not know what your right is doing. Your alms given must be secret, and your father who sees all that is done in secret will reward you. And when you pray, Do not imitate the hypocrites. They love to say their prayers standing up in the synagogues and at the street corners for people to see them. I tell you solemnly, they have had their reward. But when you pray, go to your private room and when you have shut your door, pray to your father who is in that secret place. And your father who sees all that is done in secret will reward you. When you fast, do not put on a gloomy look as the hypocrites do. They pull long faces to let men know they are fasting. I tell you solemnly, they have had their reward. But when you fast, put oil on your head and wash your face, so that no one will know you are fasting except your father who sees all that is done in secret. And your father who sees all that is done in secret will reward you. Beloved in Christ, the gospel of the Lord. Back home and even here, you see young people like the one praying and praising God now. Adoring God, making the sign of the cross, sometimes kneeling before the Blessed Sacrament. And some of the kids here do that. You know, the way they they kneel, or parents have taught them to make the sign of the cross, and and all of that. And it's it's a wonderful sight to see. And there are some of them that sometimes when we are praying in the Eucharistic prayer, and it comes to the part of saying amen, they shout amen. And sometimes we hear and people begin to smile and laugh. But that is something that we have to really watch out. Such kids, sometimes at the age of three, they begin to learn how to say the Hey Mary. Sometimes they're able to say the Our Father. Sometimes they're able to stand on their own to pray. These are great signs and things to look out for in these very children. But they need guidance. They need to be instructed when they are going wayward so that they don't depart from this way of life. That was the case of St. Aloysius Gonzaga. At the age of three, of course, he was called Luigi. The Latin you know, version of Luigi is Aloysius. You know. So at the age of three, at the age of two, Luigi started praying, kneeling down giving thanks to God. But, you know, getting to 6, 7, the dad took him to... The dad was a, an army general, so you can... Every dad wanted the son to be like him or to be greater. So already he, he, he took him to the military camp 
to begin his studies and to learn all this way of becoming an officer. But as that, at that young age, he picked up, that's why it's good, he picked up some rough language. And so when he came back home, he started using those bad and rough language. And his mother had to reprimand him, correct him, to stop using those rough and bad languages. So although he was good, he picked up something from friends and where he was. But the mother was swift to correct him at that very age so that he doesn't depart from the right way. And the boy picked up the correction and became very obedient and never repeated that. And it is one thing that we need to so as we bring these young people up, we want to give them the freedom to express themselves. But when we realize as parents, as ministers, as priests, departing from that way, let us not say, oh, it's okay, let them continue. Otherwise, it will be part of them. We have to correct it as early as possible so that they don't pick up this attitude. And the mother, thanks be to God, did this, and this boy became very devotional. This boy grew up. The father didn't like this way of life because the boy had said, He'd want to become a priest. He'd want to be, live a celibate life. And he was the firstborn of eight. So obviously every inheritance and everything had to go to him. But he said, no, I don't want any of that. I'll give all my inheritance to my brother. And I'll go this path. And I believe that through this path, I will touch many lives. What did it end up to? He became a priest. And he dedicated his life for the sick. He dedicated his life to prayer. He dedicated his life to, to helping people in need. Such that when the bubonic plague hit Italy in the 16th century, it was like how COVID was, you know, how it came. That if you go near people, you might catch COVID. If you get into them, you might have. So everybody wanted to avoid and go, not go into contact with people. But Aloysius said, I'll go to them. I'll work with them. I'll help them out. Unfortunately, unfortunately, he caught the disease, but he never gave up. He saw it as his offering to God. He saw his suffering as something which he was doing good. And so look at where he ended. Beloved brothers and sisters, we have something to pick up from this saint. He died very young at the age of about 23, but he dedicated his life for the sick. He didn't fear what he would go through. He would go all a stand to help. Would we want to imitate him also in helping the needy, the poor, the sick, the suffering, and those who have no one to even speak to. Because as the first reading says, if you give sparingly, you will reap sparingly. If you give bountifully, you will reap bountifully. And every motivation for our actions, friends, is to lead us to give glory to God. Is to lead us to be pleasing in the sight of God and not man. That is why Jesus in the gospel of today reminds us that if we pray, let us know that it is our communication with our Father. It is not our communication with man. It is our Father we want to be in communion. And so we don't want to pray just to please people, but we want to pray because we want to speak to our Father. That when we fast, we do not want people to see that, oh, he's a very religious, he's fasting this day and all of that. Jesus said, don't, be, don't, don't, don't draw attention to all of that. You are fasting. Your motivation is to gain something for your spiritual good, for your soul and between your God. If you are giving and helping the poor, almsgiving, donation, know that you are doing it to please God and not to please man. And if we all strive to have a good motivation that leads and it pleases God, we will be rewarded by God. If it is to please man, yes, man will praise us, but we will lose the blessings of God. May the Lord strengthen all of us that we may have 
divine motivation in every action and deed we perform. As you sit, pray in thanksgiving to God for your life. Ask the Lord to strengthen you, to motivate you, that everything you do will have the goal of pleasing him who is God, creator and maker of your soul. Pray for the sick, the needy, the poor, the suffering, and those who have no one to care for them and to help them, that God will visit them. And ask St. Aloysius Gonzaga to intercede on their behalf. Pray for those who travel each day to work who travel for visits, who travel for business, that God would always protect, guide, and show them. For those who have lost their lives because of travel through the train, that God will give them eternal rest. And pray for the soul, for Father Pat Salmon, that God will grant him peaceful repose of his soul. Gracious and merciful God, we come before you this morning with our emptiness and nothingness, that you fill us with your richness and blessings. May every intention of our heart be answered in accordance with your will. We ask this through Christ our Lord. Blessed are you, Lord God of all creation, for through your goodness we have received the bread we offer you, fruits of the earth and work of human hands. It will become for us the bread of life. Blessed are you, Lord God of all creation, for through your goodness we have received the wine we offer you, Fruit of the vine and work of human hands, it will become our spiritual drink. Pray, my dear brothers and sisters, that my sacrifice and yours may be acceptable to Almighty God the Father. Grant us, O Lord, that by the example of St. Aloysius, we may take our place at the heavenly banquet, clothed always in our word and garment, so that by participation in this mystery, we may possess the riches of your grace. Through Christ our Lord. Amen. The Lord be with you. Amen. Lift up your heart. Amen. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is truly right and just our duty and our salvation always and everywhere to give you thanks. Lord, Holy Father, Almighty and Eternal God, 
For in the saints who consecrated themselves to Christ for the sake of the kingdom of heaven, it is right to celebrate the wonders of your providence, by which you call human nature back to its original holiness, and bring it to experience on this earth the gifts you promise in the new world to come. And so with all the angels and saints, we praise you as without end we acclaim. You are indeed holy, O Lord, the fount of all holiness. Make holy, therefore, these gifts, we pray, by sending down your Spirit upon them like the dew fall, so that they may become for us the body and blood of our Lord Jesus Christ. At the time he was betrayed and entered willingly into his passion, he took bread, and giving thanks, broke it, and gave it to his disciples, saying, Take this. All of you and eat of it, for this is my body which will be given up for you. In a similar way, when supper was ended, he took the chalice and once more giving thanks. He gave it to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and drink from it, for this is the chalice of my blood, the blood of the new and eternal covenant, which will be poured out for you and for many for the forgiveness of sins. Do this in memory of me. The mystery of faith. Save us, Savior of the world, for by your cross and resurrection you have set us free. Therefore, as we celebrate the memorial of his death and resurrection, we offer you, Lord, the bread of life and the chalice of salvation, giving thanks that you have held us worthy to be in your presence and minister to you. Humbly we pray that partaking of the body and blood of Christ, we may be gathered into one by the Holy Spirit. Remember, Lord, your church spread throughout the world and bring her to the fullness of charity, together with Francis our Pope and Alan our Bishop and all the clergy. Remember also our brothers and sisters who have fallen asleep in the hope of the resurrection and all who have died in your mercy. Welcome them into the light of your face. Have mercy on us all, we pray, that with the Blessed Virgin Mary, Mother of God, Saint Joseph, her spouse, with the blessed apostles and all the saints who have pleased you throughout the ages, we may merit to be co heirs to eternal life and may praise and glorify you through your Son, Jesus Christ. Through him and with him and in him, O God, Almighty Father, in the unity of the Holy Spirit, all glory and honor is yours forever and ever. Amen. In confidence and in trust in our loving Father, let us pray. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come. Thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread. And forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. Deliver us, Lord, we pray, from every evil. Graciously grant peace in our days, that by the help of your mercy, we may be always free from sin and safe from all distress, as we await the blessed hope and the coming of our Savior, Jesus Christ. Lord Jesus Christ, who said to your apostles, Peace I leave you, my peace I give you. Look not on our sins, but on the faith of your church, 
and graciously grant her peace and unity in accordance with your will, who live and reign forever and ever. The peace of the Lord be with you always. Let us offer each other the sign of peace. Peace be with you. Lamb of God. Behold Jesus, the Lamb of God. Behold him who takes away the sins of the world. Blessed are those called to the supper of the Lamb.
God gave them bread from heaven. Man ate the bread of angels. Let us pray. Bring us, who have been fed with the food of angels, O Lord, to serve you in purity of life, and in following the example of St. Aloysius, whom we honor today, may we persevere in constant thanksgiving through Christ our Lord. So the work in the church continues today. So there will be no church cleaning today as well. Thank you. The Lord be with you. And may Almighty God bless you, the Father, and the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Amen. Go in peace. The Mass is ended. And kindly remember me in your prayers, because I travel to New York this afternoon. I'll see you later at the end of July. God bless you, and have a blessed day.